Do you have a favorite actor or a favorite movie star? We're always amazed by how actors can portray different characters in our movies. And what strikes us, they play a character that is completely different from themselves. We often hear in interviews or read newspapers about these actors who portray different roles on screen, but in real life, they're totally different people. An actor can play a sinister character, but they themselves are kind and, and gentle individuals. There is such a separation between the role they play from their real lives. And such actors are praised for their good works. However, if people live their lives with such a separation from who they are, from who they portray to be, they are not praised, but considered hypocrites. Today, Jesus speaks to his disciples about hypocrisy. He tells them that they need to be aware of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. The leaven, or the yeast, is the characteristic that the Pharisees use to win praises of the people instead of winning approval from God. They live almost a double life. They wear masks, if you will. And they're more interested in the opinions of others instead of the love of God. But Jesus says nothing is covered up and everything will be revealed. Nothing will be hidden that will not come to light. Obviously, Jesus does not want us to be hypocrites. He wants us to be good yeast, good and honest people. He wants us to live a life of unity. He wants us to be direct and clear. Archbishop Thomas Collins of Toronto was giving a talk to seminarians and he said that as Christians we should be crystal clear. No falsehood should be in the way. The person we, the person we are in the presence of people should be consistent with the person we are behind closed doors. If we're trying to live a holy life, we should live it fully not just when we're in the presence of others. This is especially true for St. Francis de Sales. It is said that people were so impressed with the way St. Francis lived his life, they couldn't believe that he would be this way 24 hours a day. They actually thought he was acting his part. So one day, they decided to spy on him when he was at home alone. And to their amazement, he was the same person with people as he was behind closed doors. St. Francis de Sales lived a unity of life, and this way of life proved this faithfulness to Christ. He was consistent with his faith and who he was. Are we consistent with our faith in Jesus? Are we hiding behind a mask? Are we acting as Christians so that we can be liked and praised by others, but behind closed doors, we're totally different? But the good news is, we can live a unity of life. Jesus taught us this way, and he taught us how we can live this life. We are to be straightforward, honest people. But we must begin by being honest with ourselves, with others, and with God. Jesus says, let what you say simply say, be yes or no. And when we interact with others, our words will mean a lot to them. Our yes should be a yes, and our no should be a no. 
Jesus stresses this point because we are valued by the promises we keep and the commitment we try to fulfill. Remain consistent and reliable, trustworthy, because we keep our word. By doing this, we practice the habit of speaking the truth. And this is so important. The more we do this, the more we live a unity of life. Our word will be our strength and will reflect who we are as Christians. When we hold to the truth, we are imitating the life of our Lord, who is truth itself. Our world today is much in need of men and women who need to remain true to their word. We need to have courage and not to be feared by persecution and be honest in our faith and our beliefs. And we must try not to be influenced by the ways or opinions of others who undermine our love for Jesus. We need to be crystal clear, consistent with our faith and who we are. Trusting that God knows our desires and needs, we bring to him in a spirit of sincere humility the needs of the world and ourselves. That government leaders may seek after integrity and be true to their call to service, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those who defend and promote abortion may be transformed by the renewal of their minds and always defend the right of every person to life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be cared for with gentleness and patience, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our We now pray for those people who have written or called us and asked us to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our giver of all life. We ask you to sustain our life and the life of the world. Hear our cries for help. Make us generous as you are in answering those who turn to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, watch my. 